What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. In this quick video, I'll be showing you Nvidium and Bobby, two crazy powerful mods for Minecraft, very similar to what I showed you in my latest Minecraft video, Distant Horizons, which essentially turned your game from looking like this to that, and finally that. Distant Horizons adds all of this that you can see in the distance here beyond, I don't know, 12 chunks or however much vanilla Minecraft renders with very little performance impact. It does this by using LODs, which are essentially much lower quality versions of terrain, like this mountain over here could just be a box, another box, and another box, three separate objects instead of 10 million small little blocks. That's how LODs work, and that's how Distant Horizons works. Nvidium is very similar. However, instead of using lower quality LODs, this actually keeps pretty much the full quality in some way or another. It's super optimized. However, as the name suggests, it's only compatible with Nvidia due to OpenGL extensions only working specifically with Nvidia. So that's unfortunately the one downside, but Nvidia and Distant Horizons can be used together. The only other drawback is that Nvidia doesn't allow shaders simply because of how it works. Okay, with all of that out of the way, let's actually get into installing Nvidia for the latest version of Minecraft so I can show you what it does and how it compares to Distant Horizons. First of all, much like the Distant Horizons video, Nvidia uses Fabric. So, first of all, you'll need to download and install Fabric or a fork of Fabric like Quilt, and you can do so simply by visiting fabricmc.net and downloading it here. Then, when the download finishes, clicking Windows, simply open it up and click through the installer, choosing the Minecraft version as the latest one, in my case 1.20.4, that's supported by Nvidia as well, in this case 1.20.4 is supported. So simply click install with create profile checked and that's it. You've now successfully installed Fabric. What you'll need to do then is click this link over here or in the description down below to download the Fabric API. Simply click see all for featured versions here. Then at the very top, use filter versions to select 1.20.4 or the version that you downloaded. Then download the latest release here. With the latest Fabric API downloaded, we'll need to add this to our Minecraft mods folder. If you don't know how to get there, hold Windows and press R or start and press R, which should bring up this here. Alternatively, you can type what I'm about to show you into this section of any file explorer window. Simply type in percentage app data percentage and hit enter. This will take you straight to C users your username app data roaming where we can find dot Minecraft in here. Simply open it up and then open the mods folder. Otherwise, create a folder called mods and open it. If you don't see anything inside of your app data folder or you're having some other kind of issues, click view at the very top, show and make sure that file name extension and hidden items are both ticked. On Windows 10, you'll see a view ribbon at the very top and on the far right, those two options. Inside of this mods folder that you just created, simply make sure it's empty so nothing conflicts and drag the Fabric API from your downloads into this folder. Now we're all set up and we'll keep this folder open. Now let's go ahead and download Nvidia as well as Sodium and a couple of other mods to get this working properly. Head across to the Nvidia link down below. Once again, download the version here that matches. Otherwise, see all, filter versions 1.20.4 or your version and download the latest one here. Then drag it into your mods folder. Now we'll also be downloading Bobby, which should help raise our render distance even on servers that don't support it. Once again, see all, select the version here and download the latest one that matches. Drag it into your mods folder and now we'll be downloading a couple more mods just to make sure we have a ton of performance. The first one I'd recommend is Sodium, which should increase our FPS hugely. So see all versions 1.20.4 download. Then Sodium Extra, which is a couple more options for even more granular control over our FPS. You know the spiel, see all 1.20.4 and download. Then Lithium as well, see all 1.20.4 download, Indium, see all, 1.20.4, download, and that's pretty much it. Unfortunately, Iris Shaders, which is something that I showed you in my previous video, isn't compatible with this. Once again, as this mod disables shaders, or rather disables itself when you try to use shaders. It's unfortunate, but it's just how this mod works. That being said, you can use it alongside Distant Horizons for much higher quality views into the distance and then lower quality beyond that. But unfortunately, unlike Distant Horizons, in the new beta, you're not able to use shaders. Okay, let's quickly get to installing these. 
So we downloaded indium, lithium, sodium extra, sodium, and that's it. We should now be fully set up. If there's anything else you'd like to add, do so now. If you want to install this alongside the Distant Horizons Beta, which I showed you in the previous video, you'll need to replace some of the mods here, or some of the mods from the Beta Installer from Iris. So, Iris, even though we can't really use it here, Sodium Fabric, Indium, and of course, Distant Horizons Alpha. I'll copy these, and in my current mods folder next to Invidium, I'll delete Indium, as well as Sodium, as we'll be replacing those now, just to make sure we don't have two copies of the same thing. So, I'll move back my Distant Horizon mods here, but of course, I'll have them disabled when I show you what Invidium is, and then later on, enable them to show you that they can work together. Right, now that we're finally set up, let's open the Minecraft Launcher, and in here, what I'd recommend you do if you have extra RAM available is give Minecraft some more RAM to play around with so we can keep more of the world loaded at once. I'll select Fabric Loader 1.20.4, which is the version we installed. Then on the Installations tab, we'll head across to it, click the three dots, Edit, Expand More Options, and scrolling down, XMX 2G means 2 gigabytes of RAM can be allocated to Minecraft and nothing more. You can open your Task Manager with Control Shift and Escape. Then under Performance, followed by Memory, you can see I'm currently using 49 of my 128 gigs of RAM. This is a ludicrous amount. You'll probably be using 4 of 8 or 4 of 16. What you'll want to do is give Minecraft maybe up to 75% of the RAM that's left and free on your PC. You can see the available amount over here. So if you have 16 gigs of RAM, you're currently using 4, you can give Minecraft, let's say, 8. That leaves some more in the background for other programs and browsers to work, etc. Simply replace 2 with 8 or whatever number you come up to. I have a crazy amount of RAM, so I'll be giving this 64 gigs to play with. I'll save it and fire up Fabric Loader 1.20.4. Alright, in here we'll head across to Options and I'll make sure that Distant Horizons is disabled just so you can see exactly what Invidium does. Under Video Settings, Invidium, which is brand new, you'll see that it should be enabled. If it's complaining about being disabled, make sure to head across to the shader pack section and check that it's disabled here. All right, with everything as is, I'll head back, single player, and I'll either create a new world or load into an existing one. I've just created a world here and loaded in a ton of chunks, so it should be super quick to populate the surrounding areas. There we go. We're now inside of Minecraft, but as you can see, I can only really see, let's say, 12 chunks. My FPS is around 750, apparently, 600, let's call it 500, 600 on average, and we can only see options, video, 14 chunks. Now, you may think that Invidium isn't working, and you'd technically be wrong. It actually is working at this point. What's happening here is that it's keeping chunks up to 100 chunks away in any direction. So, if I were to take off here and fly away, you'll see that the distant chunks here aren't unloading, even though we're loading new chunks here. I can fly actually incredibly far, so I'll F3 and N to enter spectator mode, scroll up to fly faster, and we'll quickly take into the distance so you can see just how far things stay loaded. All right, so that jungle over there is still loaded, pretty much in full quality, and we're all the way over here. We've traveled an incredible distance, and we're still going. Now you can crank this up pretty much as high as you want, and your FPS still stays pretty good. I'll check my FPS, and once again, we're at 550, 600, nothing's changed, except for maybe GPU usage. My frames are exactly the same, and the world has an incredible amount of detail loaded in into the distance. This is slightly different to Distant Horizons, which does all this generating for you. Here, it just keeps it all loaded. I've raised my render distance just to help it load a little bit faster at once. So we're loading more chunks in one go. If you change your render distance, it seems to reset. Nvidia and all of our chunks here are forgotten. But you can see the absolutely crazy sized world that I'm currently rendering in that I'll be able to see all at once from wherever I'm playing down below. All right, so if we park off down here somewhere, you'll see that we can see that very distant mountain all the way over there, and of course, the rest of the stuff around us. Unlike distant horizons, this area isn't filled in, there, etc., as I haven't been there. If we were to disconnect here, save, and head back, here's where the one major difference comes in. When we reload, all of the chunks that we loaded previously are gone. We'll need to travel around them once more before we can come back here. So this mod is really cool, and the fact that we can load all of these things in the distance in 100% quality, pretty much, is actually quite a feat, especially that we're not losing any frames at all, really. It's a little bit sad that you need NVIDIA hardware to do so, so it's pretty much locked down, but that's that. 
it's actually a really cool mod, although it may be a little bit limited. Now, let's see what we can do by enabling Distant Horizons. Options, Distant Horizons, Enable, and Enable Generation 2. Now you can see infinitely further into the world. The thing about this is, if I were to have a texture pack installed or enabled, for example, oh, also there's a lot less glitching using just NVIDIAM, but anyways, you can see over in the distance there, those trees look a little bit different. That's because these ones are LODs and they haven't actually loaded in just yet. You'll see the color changes slowly, as flashy as the world is, when we actually get to loading these trees. These ones over here are loaded in fully, and those ones aren't. These two mods combined is actually super powerful. Also, never mind the weird glitching, that's just Distant Horizons being alpha. Having this higher quality is actually really cool, although it does require us to have already visited places or rendered them in, in order to have the extra quality available to us. It helps fend off weird things such as water discoloration, where the water is changing from a light cyan to a darker blue, etc. in the distance that hasn't loaded in already, thanks to distant horizons, where things just look a lot better. For example, this kelp that's loaded in undersea will actually stay if I travel all the way over there and look back here using a zoom mod, a telescope in-game, or anything like that. It's really cool. The only one place where NVIDIA breaks is Escape, Options, Video Settings, Shader Packs. Enabling anything as such will disable NVIDIA and it'll load LODs. Here you can really see the difference. These cherry blossom trees over there are now just pink squares, whereas before you could actually see the leaves, even though it was a little bit weird looking. This is the thing that happens with Distant Horizons. Things look great nearby, and in the distance it's of course knocked down a step or two. If we were to enable NVIDIA by disabling our shader pack, you'll see that now the trees look a little bit different but they're still blocky if we head to them. They'll be loaded in so they look a lot less blocky. We can see the trunks and heading back into the distance, they still look like trees. So to be honest, is NVIDIA worth it? Well, if you're sensitive to flashing lights, such as the weird glitches that we see with distant horizons in alpha state, then yes, NVIDIA is definitely going to be better for you. If you like seeing far off into the world like I am right now, then no, NVIDIA isn't necessarily for you. However, if you're playing on servers where you're not able to generate all of these distant chunks, NVIDIA may actually be better for you as you can keep chunks far away from you loaded, whereas here, with Distant Horizons, it just beats it out infinitely in single player where we can generate these worlds. So if you're playing on some kind of SMP server or something like that, and you're traveling around, NVIDIA keeps all of those chunks loaded, even though you won't see players running around in them, etc. It should look a lot more lively than what a single player world looks like here. Bobby and NVIDIA work together to make that happen, whereas Distant Horizons may not have the same result. Anyways, it's all up to you. I'd love to hear what you think and whether you agree with me or disagree with me in the comments down below. Of course, if you have any other plugin suggestions, please do let me know as I'd love to cover them. Thank you all for watching. My name has been Troubleshoot and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.